see if this works. Oh. Slightly ahead of myself. Oh, good morning, um, and thank you very much for the kind invitation. And I bring uh, to you greetings from my many senior colleagues uh, in the United Kingdom who I have a privilege um, of representing. Um, I also apologize for not being here last year. You kindly invited me last year, but due to um, commitments with our police federation, our police union, I was unable to attend and had to cancel at short notice. But in a way, I think that's worked to my advantage because policing has changed massively in England uh, over the last one year. And I've you'll notice I've slightly changed what I'm going to talk about, um, but that was really to reflect what happened uh, yesterday. Uh, and I have some opportunities, I think, to say some different things because the colleagues already covered many of the issues uh, we're facing uh, in England. They are absolutely transferable uh, to here. My actual role since leaving Northern Ireland on the 1st of September 2009, after seven years as chief, um, and being elected as the president of the Association of Chief Police Officers, uh, it's a strange role. It is not operational. It's an elected position, and my task is to represent the views of the leadership of the service with government, uh, and to advise government on policing issues, and to develop national policies in what is a very devolved model of policing. And devolved policing was again touched on as a key, key strength uh, yesterday. Uh, we're facing at the moment, I think, and it's no, uh, I don't think we're being overdramatic, uh, some of the biggest challenges since Robert Peel founded the police service in 1829, and we too are very proud of our policing history. Um, we're looking at cuts of about 20% in the police budgets over the next four years as government tries to balance the books. We are pretty close to being bankrupt. Uh, we face, as the recession bites, increasing demands from our communities, not just around crime, but all the other issues we deal with in the routine of our day. It is entirely predictable, I think, but as other partners from the public sector retract, many of the problems that they used to deal with will transfer into the environment our people deal with. I think it's quite interesting that the basic distinction, uh, albeit not a perfect one, between us and other parts of the public sector is that they work in controlled environments, defined space such as hospitals, schools, surgeries. Our people work in uncontrolled environments, namely the streets. As the first and last emergency service, we cannot say no. Um, indeed, we expect some of our most junior staff, I think this is a unique feature of a British policing model, uh, and likewise across the world, in fact. We, make, we expect some of our most junior staff to make split-second decisions with little information, with no information, with conflicting information, or sometimes even deliberately misleading information. What they cannot do is not make a decision, and frequently they will have to act in a split second. They have no chance to refer upwards or seek advice. <coughs> the hindsight brigade, uh, and of course what they do, um, and the consequences of that decision may well have local, national, or indeed international implications and impact on competence in policing. The hindsight brigade, which we certainly have, it's alive and well.